And good morning. So good morning and welcome back to JPC Spiritual Talk, Chair Campbell. So this morning, so we're going to talk about this morning, we're going we're to talk about Stephen, the first martyr out of the book of Acts. Because today in the Orthodox Church, we remember Stephen. So we're going to talk about him today with some readings out of Acts chapter 6 and Acts chapter 7. And then we're going to close out. Our close out reading will come out of Matthew chapter 21. We're going to talk about the parable of the vine dressers. We're also going to take a look at Luke's account of the parable of the vine dressers. And, and that is in Luke, cha in Luke chapter 20. And so that will be our focal points for this morning. So we're going to start out first by talking about Stephen, the first martyr. And then from there, close out that reading from Matthew and Luke. But before we get into all this, start out by asking the Lord for the prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we're going to ask the Lord. We're going to ask the Lord to shine into our hearts, O loving Master, the pure light of your divine knowledge. And open up the eyes of our mind that we may understand your teachings in Scripture. Help us to apply what we learn so after having conquered simple desires. We may pursue the spiritual way of life, thinking and doing all the things that are pleasing to you. Your Christ, our God, you are light, and to you we do glory. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever, in the sages. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd. For it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Again, again, my mother, brothers, and sisters of those who hear the word of God will do it. The Lord is our shepherd. All right, good morning. Welcome back. So great is his faithfulness. Indeed, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. Christ is truly in our midst. The true definition of minister is to serve someone else's will. My pleasure to bring you all God's word each and every day. The Lord is our shepherd. All right, good morning. We'll go ahead and get our screen shared over. We're going to start out first by talking about Stephen, the first martyr. I got everything pulled up and ready to go. Thank you all again for following. Hope you enjoy this morning's devotional reading study. I'm going to start out right here in the Orthodox Daily Readings, where we're going to start this morning. So we're going to talk about Stephen, right? the archdeacon and the first martyr. Here we go. I hope you all can see that. So St. Stephen was a Jew by race, and as some say, a disciple of Gamel. The teacher of the law mentioned in Acts chapter 5, verse 30, 34, and Acts chapter 22, verse 3. He was the first to seven deacons whom the apostles established in Jerusalem to care for the poor and to distribute alms to them. Being a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, he performed great signs and wonders among the people. While disputing with the Jews concerning Jesus and wisely refuting their every contradiction, so that no one was able to withstand the wisdom and the spirit whereby he spoke. He was, he was slandered as a blasphemer and was dragged off to the Sanhedrin of the elders. There with boldness, he proved from the divine scriptures the coming of the just one, Jesus, of whom they had become the betrayers and murderers. And he reproved their faithless, faithless and hard hardness. And finally, gazing to heaven, and beholding the divine glory, he said, Lo, I see the heavens open, the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But when they heard this, they stopped their ears and with anger cast him out of the city and stoned him. While he was calling out and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then imitating the long suffering of the master, he bent his knees and prayed in a loud voice for them that were stoning him. And he said, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And saying this, he fell asleep. Acts chapter 6, 7. Thus becoming the first among the martyrs of the church of Christ. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. Beautiful. We're going to start right here. We're going to read the Acts of the Apostles. So it'll be Acts chapter 6, verses 8 through 15. Acts chapter 7, verses 1 through 5. And Acts chapter 7, verses 47 through 60. We're going to take a deeper look into all this. I already got it broken down 
when we get into our study portion. For now, we're just going to read. It won't let me zoom in. So we'll read from here. So it says, In those days, Stephen, full of grace and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. And some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freed men, as it was called, and of the Cyrenians and of the Alexandrians, and of those from Cisicia and Asia, arose and disputed with Stephen, but they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit in which he spoke. Then they secretly instigated men who said, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes, and they come upon him and seized him and brought him for the council and set up false witnesses who said, this man never ceases to speak words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and will change the customs which Moses delivered to us. And gazing at him, all who sat in the council saw that his face was like the face of an angel. And the high priest said, is this so? And Stephen said, brethren and fathers, hear me. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Macedonia, before he lived in Haran, and said to him, depart from your land and from your kindred and go into the land which I will show you. But he departed from the land of the Chaldeans and lived in Haran. And after his father died, God removed him from there and into this land in which you are now living. Yet he gave him no inheritance in it, not even a foot's length, but promised to give it to him in possession and to his prosperity after him, through he had no child. But it was Solomon who built a house for him. Yet the Most High does not dwell in the houses made with hands. As the prophet says, heaven is my throne and the earth my footstool. What house will you build for me, says the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Did not my hand make all these things? You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophet, which of the prophets did not your fathers persecute? And they kill those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered. You who received the law as delivered by the angels did not keep it. Now, when they heard these things, they were enraged and they ground their teeth against him. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, behold, I see the heavens open, and the son of man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and rushed together upon him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at, at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he knelt down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against him. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. In the, name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I get into the study portion now. So Acts chapter 6, verse 8 through 15. Stephen accused of blasphemy. So let's read this. This is a new King James Version that we'll get into our study. So it says, And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Then there arose some, what is called the synagogue of the freedmen, Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and those from Cilicia and Asia, disputing with Stephen. And when they were not able to resist the wisdom and spirit by which he spoke, then they secretly in induced men to say, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. And they stirred up the people and elders and the scribes, and they came upon him, seized him, and brought him to the council. They also set up false witnesses who said, This man does not cease to speak blasphemous words against the holy place and the law. <laughs> For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs which Moses delivered to us. And all who said it in the council, looking steadfastly, 
looking steadfastly at him, saw his face as a face of an angel. And the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So into our study portion here. So let's take a look at verse nine, right? So in verse nine says, then there rose some from what is called the synagogue of the freed men, right? the Cyrenians, the Alexandrians, and those from Cicicia in Asia disputing with Stephen. So the freed men, the freed men were Jews who had been formerly held captive under the Romans, often because of rebellion. Verse 11, it says, Then they secretly induced men to say, We we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. So this charge is brought against Stephen because of Christ, right? The liturgy and law of the Old Testament are fulfilled and, and, and are thus changed and transformed. Let's take a look at Hebrews chapter 7, verse 12. It says, For the... For the priesthood being changed of necessity, there is also a change of the law. Okay? To those who do not believe in Christ, these changes are considered what blasphemy. Okay? Look at verse 14. And it says, For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs which Moses delivered to us, okay? So, <clears throat> so the charge that Jesus would destroy the temple was leveled against him at his trial, right? Let's look at Matthew chapter 26, verse 61. And it said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. So that's in Matthew chapter 26. Verse 61. So the charge that Jesus would destroy the temple was leveled against him at his trial, Matthew chapter 26, verse 61, by false witnesses. This was a misinterpretation of two of his sayings. One, destroy this temple in three days, I will raise it up. Look at John chapter 2, verse 19. Jesus' answer said to them, destroy this temple. And in three days, I'll rise it up. So it's referring to what? His own body, right? So that's what he's referring to, his resurrection. Two, his prophecy, his prophecy of the destruction of the temple. See Luke chapter 21, verses 6 and 20. So Luke 21, verse 6. These things which you see in the days will come in, which not one stone shall be left upon another. That shall not be thrown down. I think it was verse 20. Verse 20. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then you know that its desolation is near. Okay. This prophecy was fulfilled in what? AD 70, when the Romans destroyed the temple as punishment for what? The Jewish rebellion. So there was a Jewish rebellion, so they burned it down as punishment. All right, so let's look at verse 15, and then we'll continue on. Okay. Let's go back here. Acts 6, verse 15. And all who sat in the council, looking steadfastly at him, saw his face as the face of an angel. So those who become one with Christ receive, receive this divine radiance revealed in Stephen's face. This is, a, this is a preview of the glory all believers will share in the age to come. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into, into the same image from, gl from glory to glory, just, uh, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. You can also take a look at Exodus, right? Chapter 34. The shining face of Moses, right? So Exodus chapter 34, verses 29 through 35. It's another, another source, another example, right? Of what they probably saw of Stephen's face, okay? All right, so let's look 
Acts chapter 7, 1 through 5. All right, so Stephen's address, the call of Abraham. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> then the high priest said, are these things so? And he said, brethren and fathers, listen. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Macedonia before he dwelt in Haran. And said to him, get out of your country and from your relatives and come to the land that I will show you. Then he came out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Haran. And from there, when his father was dead, he moved him to this land in which he now dwell. And God gave him no inheritance in it and, he, and not even enough to set his foot on. But even when Abraham had no child, he promised to give it to him for a possession and to his descendants after him. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So what we see right there, right? Stephen does not answer the high priest. So he doesn't answer the high priest what directly, right? So he's not directly answering, right, the high priest. So the high priest said, and the high priest said, are these things so? And he said, brethren and fathers, listen, right? Starts to give them what a history lesson. So Stephen does not directly answer the high priest but uses the charges as the context of his preaching. As with Peter's sermon on Pentecost, that was in Acts chapter 2. Oh, man. Acts chapter 2. It's Peter's sermon. Okay. All right, so let's go back. So just, just as with Peter's sermon at, Pente at Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, verses 14 through 40, Stephen preaches Jesus Christ based on what the Old Testament, showing how the Jews consistently miss the purpose of God's dealings with them due to their what hardness of heart. That's in verse 51, which we'll look at that in a second because we're about to be done here in our study of Stephen. So I'm going to finish up. We're going to look at verses 47 through 60 here in Acts, right? And then we'll get over to the parable of the vine dressers in Matthew 21. So it says, but Solomon built him a house. However, the most high does not dwell in temples made with hands. As the prophet says, heaven is my throne. The earth is my footstool. What house will you build for me? Says the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? As my hand has my hand not made all these things. You stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so do you. Which of, the which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who foretold the coming of the just one, of whom you now have become the betrayers and murderers. You have received the law by the direction of angels and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gashed at him with their teeth. But he being full, the Holy Spirit gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And said, look, I see the heavens open, the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. And then when they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears and ran at him with one accord. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses lay down their clothes at the, at the feet of a young man named Saul. And they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge him with his sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. And the father Son and the Holy Spirit. It's beautiful. Beautiful. So verses 47 and 50. Right, let's look at those. So the most high does not dwell in temples made with hands. Right? However, the most high, right here in verse 48. However, the most high does not dwell in temples made with hands, as the prophet says. Okay, so the, the most high does not dwell in temples made with hands. This does not mean that God was not present in the temple. Rather, it indicates that God's presence is not limited to a specific temple, but dwells in every soul that receives him. Go to back to John chapter 4, right? The Samaritan woman at the well. Jesus tells her that God is spirit, right? When Jesus tells her that God is spirit, what he's saying is that he's present and he fills all things, right? He's not confined to a particular place, if that makes sense. All right, we look at verse 51. It's one of my favorite verses. I try not to laugh when I read this. When Stephen says, you stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did. So do you. 
right? So Israel resisted the Holy Spirit by neither accepting God's plan for them nor receiving his correction through the prophets. These Jewish leaders continued to resist the Holy Spirit and their opposition to Jesus and to also to his disciples. Then in verses 55 and 58, we see what a vision, right, from Stephen. It says, but, but he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said, look, I see the heavens open, son of man standing at the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears and ran him on a cord. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of the young man named Saul, which eventually becomes Paul, right? So Stephen's vision of the enthroned Christ is seen by his opponents as the ultimate blasphemy, which carried the penalty of stoning. Leviticus chapter 24. So a little bit, Leviticus chapter 24, verse 16. And over blasphemies, and who... Whoever blasphemes the name of the Lord shall surely be put to death. And all the congregation shall certainly stone him. And the stranger, as well as him, who was born in a land, when the when he blasphemes the name of the Lord, he shall be put to death. So Saul, right, was a participant in Stephen's martyrdom. And he was a great persecutor of the early Christians. He would later be called by Christ to be his apostle and would become a great Christian missionary. Paul of Tarsus, that's in Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 22, which is a good read. You want to read about Paul's conversion to Christianity. All right, so back to Acts 7, and we're going to take a look at the very last little bit of this, right? 59 and 60, and we'll move over to Matthew chapter 21. So in verses 59 and 60, it says, they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying, Lord, Jesus received my spirit. But he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not charge him with his sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. So Stephen, in imitation of his Savior, Stephen offers his soul to God and prays for the forgiveness of his enemies. So in Luke, was it Luke 23, 34, right here. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garments and cast lots. That was that when Jesus was on the cross. So Stephen, in imitation like his Savior, prayed for the forgiveness of his enemies. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. So let's look at Matthew chapter 21. All right. We're going to read to verse 44. All right, here we go. All right, so Matthew chapter 21, verses 33 through 33 through 44, the parable of the wicked vine dressers. So this was kind of what Stephen was talking about, right? Stephen was talking about the persecution of all those who came, right? The prophets. So this parable is going to tie into what Stephen was talking about before he was stoned. All right, so the parable of the wicked vine dressers. So Matthew chapter 21. And it says, here another parable. There was a certain landowner who planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it and built a tower. And he leased it to the vine dressers and went into a far country. Now, when vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the vine dressers that they might receive its fruits. And the vine dressers took his servants, beat one, killed one, and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first, and they did likewise to them. Then last of all, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the vine dressers saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him. And seize his inheritance. So they took him and cast him out of the vine vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vi vineyard comes, what will he do to those vine dressers? They said to him, He will destroy those wicked men miserably 
and leads his vineyard to another vine dressers who will, who will render to him the fruits of their seasons. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures? The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous. And it, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. And whoever falls on this stone will be broken, but whoever it falls, it will grind him to powder. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So Jesus is talking about himself, right? He's talking about he's going to be killed. Right? Talking about his passion on the cross. So we see, so before we go any further, I'm going to look at Luke's account. We're going to read Luke's account. Luke chapter 20, verses 9 through 16, right? So here is Luke's account, right? The parable of the wicked vine dressers, right? So it says, then he began to tell the people this parable. A certain man planted a vineyard leased it to the vine dressers and went into a far country for a long time. Now at vintage time. So now at vintage time, he sent a servant to the vine dressers that they might give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. But the vine dressers beat him and sent him away empty handed. Again, he sent another servant and they beat him also treated him shamefully and sent him away empty handed. Again, he sent a third and they would wound him also and cast him out. And the owner of the vineyard said, what shall I do? I will send my beloved son. Probably they will respect him when they see him. But when the vine dressers saw him, they reasoned among themselves, saying, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and that the inheritance may be ours. So they cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, what will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come to destroy those vine dressers who have given the, the vineyard to others. And when they heard it, they said, Certainly not. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We see here in Matthew's account, let's look at verse 41. And it says, They said to him, He will destroy those wicked men miserably, and leave his vineyard to another vine dresser who will render to him the fruits of their seasons. Again, we see the Jewish leaders convict themselves, right? Let's look at verse 31 here in Matthew. But it actually starts in verse 28, right? Let me back over here. So here we go. The parable of the two sons. But what do you think a man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, son, go work today in my, in my vineyard. And he, and he answered and said, I will not. But after he regretted it, he went. Then he came to the second and said, likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said to him, the first. Jesus said to them, and surely I say to you, that tax collectors and harlots enter the kingdom of God before you. It's right there. For John came to you in a way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But tax collectors and harlots believed him. And when you saw it, you did you did not afterward relent and believe him. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So he's getting onto them for not repenting and turning from their ways. Here in verse 44, in Matthew's account, it says, Whoever falls on the stone will be broken, but whoever it falls, it will grind into powder. So, so the stone is Christ. And according to the writings of St. John Chrysostom, this saying illustrates the two ways of destruction. Those falling on the stone are people who suffer the consequences of their sins, while yet, while yet in this life. Where those on whom the stone falls are unrepentant people suffering utter destruction and the final judgment, you know, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So let's look at Luke's account before we close out. 
So Luke's account in chapter 20, verses 9 through 16, and we'll go, we're going to close out. Hope you enjoyed the study. All right, so in the parable, the man right, represents God the Father. And the vineyard refers to God's people, the vine dressers, or the leaders of the Jews entrusted to care for their people. Each servant, right? Look at verses 10 through 12. Now, at vintage time, he sent a servant to the vine dressers that they might give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. But the vine dressers beat him and sent him away empty handed. Again, he sent another servant and they beat him also, treat him shamefully and sent him away empty handed. And again, he sent a third and they would wound him also and cast him out. So each servant in verses 10 through 12 sent by the owner stands for Old Testament prophets who comes to call the people back to God. While the beloved son, in verse 13, then the owner of the vineyard said, what shall I do? I will send my beloved son. Probably they will respect him when they see him. So the beloved son is referring to Christ himself. When the son is cast out of the vineyard, in verse 15, so they cast him out of the vineyard and kill them. Therefore, what will the owner of the vineyard do to them? So when the son is cast out of the vineyard, verse 15, to be killed, this is understood on two levels. One, that Jesus was killed outside Jerusalem. And two, that Jesus was crucified by foreign soldiers, not by those of his own vineyard. The others, in verse 16, who later received the vineyard are the Gentiles brought back into the church. So verse 16, he will come and destroy those vine dressers and give the vineyard to others. And when they heard it, they said, certainly not. May the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's where we'll end this morning. Well, thank you for following. Hope you were able to stick with me. Love that bouncing back and forth. But a good study. Thank you all again. We'll close out in prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord God, you spoke to us, your divine sacred words. You illuminate the souls of sinners that comprehend what we just read. That we don't appear as simply as hear spiritual words, but doers of good deeds, true pursuers of faith. Having to blame his life and conduct without reproaching Christ your Lord, you are light. And to you we give glory. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, you sages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That kingdom come, they will be done, earth is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, and forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. But yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, the sages. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be merciful to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, the sages. Amen. Depart peace, name of the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace be with you all. Go in peace. Shalom, shalom. May the Lord forgive those who love us and those who hate us. Chair Wesley Campbell, good morning, good day, good afternoon, good evening, whenever and however all these messages and studies find you all. I love you all so much. Thank you all for following. So after, after December, going into the start of the new year, I'll start back with our Acts. I think we left off at Acts chapter 17. I, I, I could be wrong, but we'll start. We'll finish up Acts and we'll get into the new year. And then we'll find something else to study. After we finish Acts, I was thinking about starting the book of Revelations after Acts to start the new year. I take a deep look into the book of Revelation. I don't know what some of you think. Let me know in the comments. Thank you all again for following. I love you all so much. I developed that relationship with him. Love you all so much. I'm out.